So nothing as a brand has always been on my radar, mostly for their approach to design. I think their products really stand out and I like the simplicity of them. Their new release now is this budget phone called the Nothing Phone 2A. Now, budget phones have been pretty popular for a while with many companies over the last few years. Apple had their iPhone SE models, Samsung with their A54 and A55 just released, Google with their Pixel A and so on. And now we have this phone from this company called Nothing, which is fairly new with their headquarters here in London. They've released their first generation flagship phone in 2022, followed by a second gen in 2023, and now raising eyebrows again with this new model, which I think it might become one of the most hyped phone of 2024. You kinda see it all over the internet already with many reviews and good comments and I guess this will have a lot of hype considering this is a new design language. The Nothing 2A comes at $350 in the US, which for me sounds like a total steal for what it can do. I've picked this up on Amazon actually just before the day it's release, as it was on an offer which also included their Buds Pro from CMS which is a sub-brand of nothing, and I'll cover more on that later as well. The Phone to a box comes with an iconic design robot kind of face, where you can instantly recognize the new camera design. It's a pretty unique unboxing experience in my opinion, with great quality materials all around. The internal box where you get the phone and accessories is actually pretty nice too with this textured design, and the phone is nicely presented in a paper wrap. There's a C2C cable for charging, and again we see that glass design here on connectors, but also the SIM pin removal as well. Right out of the box this phone feels instantly quite unique, it looks very much like their previous models and keeps that nice transparent design language on the back, which nothing is known for. It still has the grips, but these are now more partially added around the camera area only. And as we can see the cameras are now centered, and I think this is something that is definitely a conversation starter, and mainly because we've never seen phones with this camera layout. While this is a very subjective like any other design element, I personally think it looks great. I like the fact that this doesn't really have a huge camera bump either, it feels really nice on hand and also finally we have a phone that doesn't really wiggle when you use it on a desk. I've been testing this phone for almost 2 weeks now and it's been super fun. I wanted to spend some decent amount of time with it, so hopefully this video will give you some helpful insight if you're thinking to get one. The Nothing Phone 2A is more as an optimal everyday phone, rather than your main flagship. And as we mentioned, this is a budget phone, and of course they had to cut down some costs on parts. Things like wireless charging, faster CPU, glass materials are all missing here. But it's not all bad, because you kind of get the basics. And when I think of this phone after using it, I think of the basic everyday need in a phone. Performance wise, this sits somewhere in between their other flagship phones. So it definitely outperforms the first gen, but we need to always keep in mind the low price of this. So okay, it's all made of plastic, apart from the internal parts of course. It has an aluminum structure, but also the buttons, I think they're also made of metal. They definitely don't feel like plastic. Having a plastic frame and plastic back makes it pretty light considering this is a big phone with a 6.7 inch screen. Not too light to feel cheap or not to have it feel uncomfortable, this is a very well balanced phone. And for someone like me who doesn't really like big phones, I have to say this felt very normal on a day to day use. There's also a pre-installed screen protector that comes with the phone, which is a nice touch, so you don't have to worry about getting one of these. So you might have seen that nothing came with this iconic design of glyphs on the back of their phone. This one has less lights than their previous models, but we get the same amount of functionality here. These lights can be customized for your timer, you can set your Uber ride waiting time here, and all sorts of notifications which you can also manually create yourself from the Glyph Composer. But that's not all, if you haven't actually had enough of Glyphs, you can also do music visualizations now, which basically syncs the light to any music coming out of the speakers. I don't really know if I'd use that, but it's there if you ever need it. The Nothing 2A comes in three colors. This one here is called Milk, and this is a little bit like semi-transparent frosty glass. It has like a smoky feel to it, and it's not really entirely transparent like the other colors, which is the white and the black. Some people say this Milk color looks a bit more like plastic than others, but I personally don't think so. It feels very premium. And also in general, the advantage of a plastic body will probably make it more drop resistant as well. The only thing we'll have to see in the future is how easily this can get marks or scratches, but so far it doesn't really feel weak. I have the feeling this will age quite nicely. So yeah, overall it feels pretty premium, great finish on the edges too, it definitely doesn't feel like a cheap plastic phone. Cameras are also pretty good in most conditions. So we've got two 50 megapixel cameras back here, which consists of one regular f1.8, and I'm assuming this is a 26 mm lens, same as we see on most smartphones nowadays as a main camera. And then we have an ultra wide at f2.2 with 114 degrees field of view. 
both of these have a Samsung sensors which perform decent. On the front we have a 32 megapixel camera with a sensor by Sony this time. And I gotta say this is very sharp and vibrant. I was quite impressed how good the cameras are in this phone overall. Again, this is a $350 phone. You don't really get the best performance in low light of course, like especially if it's night time. I tested it a few days ago and as you can see it struggles quite a bit where there's no light. The colors are a bit off and it's a bit laggy too while trying to process the information. But again, we can't complain here. For a budget phone, I think it outperforms some of the phones in this price range. On a daytime though, this works great. We see a pretty decent dynamic range here from both sensors. You don't get many camera options like 5x or telephoto. The 2x is a crop of the main sensor, so probably not your best zoom option, but hey, I can live with that. Video quality is pretty decent too. It has an optical image stabilization and it does 1080p at 30 and 60fps, 4k at 30. So basically these are your three options for shooting video. And last but not least, the screen. This is a 120Hz AMOLED screen with 394 ppi, so a very dense pixel ratio which looks very good. And being AMOLED you get that nice true black with a very high refresh rates. You can also adjust it from dynamic to a standard 60Hz or a high, which basically keeps your refresh rates at 120 at all times. The screen can go up to 1300 nits of brightness, which again this is another part where they had to cut some of the costs, but it's still good. You might struggle a bit if it's a very bright sunny day, but otherwise I haven't had any issues using it. There's also a fingerprint reader under this screen which works great. Games on this look super good, very vibrant colors, but they also run very smooth as well. There's no glitches or any sort of lag, considering this phone comes with a MediaTek chipset, which is another part when they have to shave down some of the costs, being a budget CPU. I have the 8GB RAM version here, but there's also an option for 12GB of RAM which I guess has some tiny improvements on certain apps and things like that. Or on the long run it might perform better, but even that for me, this wasn't an issue. The phone performed normally multitasking with two apps opened as well for this 8GB of RAM version. And of course we have other cool features like the IP54 rating, connectivity is also great with dual 5G SIM tray. The battery on this phone is something very impressive too. It comes with a 5000mAh battery which can last up to two days and it gets a 45 watts fast charging from 0 to 100 in only one hour. I've actually tested it and I managed to get around 12% left on the battery after 48 hours, which I personally haven't seen on a smartphone like this before. Software wise, I'm not really gonna cover much of this as you'll probably all know how Android 14 works, but the main difference here is that we have nothing OS on top of that which looks awesome and completely redesigned. You get this minimalistic interface with their funky dots design and black and white icons like, but you can also set that to default as well. At this point, we're at nothing OS 2.5, and as far as an actual performance, this works well with the hardware of this phone. I haven't really bumped into any glitches or errors so far. It's smooth and fast, apps run great, games run at decent FPS as you saw, so yeah, I can't really see any limitations at this stage with this phone. And now back to those earbuds, the CMF Buds Pro. They come at $49, which I guess that says quite a lot, and there's not much to complain here. This is a very good price deal, but what's more important is how these sound and how they work on a daily basis. I personally wouldn't trust anything below $150 to be honest, but having said that, the experience with these was quite unique. At start, these were kind of confusing to me from sound perspective, but I managed to understand the whole listening experience and I'll show you what I mean by that and how you should use these to get most out of them, because you will definitely be surprised. So first of all, why CMF? So this is actually a sub-brand released by Nothing, which stands for Color Material Finish which is an integral part of product design often abbreviated to CMF. Again here we see very similar package style with this nice minimalist design, very basic packaging, straight to the point really. I like this kind of unboxing experience with not much plastic and wraps around of cables or unnecessary stuff. Same like the phone, this come in three colors, but this time we have black, white and a very vibrant orange. Of course we have a USB Type-C for charging, there's an LED on the front here which indicates your connectivity. To pair this with your phone it's super easy, just open the case and they'll come in your app. This reminded me of the same experience we have on Apple devices, I'm quite impressed. We have all the features in app here, noise cancelling, transparency mode with some EQ presets and optional custom EQ as well, which I haven't seen on other high-end earbuds so far. So in short you might be wondering what's the angle here for $49, are these perfect? Well, no, of course, in fact they have quite a few flaws, but nothing to be unexpected at this price range. The transparency mode works okay, it's definitely there, but I'd say it's only 70% of it. 
When you're on a phone call, you can still hear your voice inside your head. I couldn't really use them on calls. After, I guess, four years of using AirPods Pro, I need a bit more time to downgrade. But if these are your first earbuds with this feature, you might find them pretty good. Noise cancellation is better. This works pretty well, actually. And again, these are budget, so you won't get the high class levels of noise cancelling like on other expensive earbuds. But it's not really far from those, so well done nothing. And then the sound. So I've tested these with Apple Music as I wanted to get the best downsampled streaming considering that Apple is lossless at its core. These buds actually support AAC codec, so you can use them with any Apple devices as well. And Apple Music has no issues of that, of course. I've also tried them with my Mac and my iPhone and they work great on those devices too. So yeah, back to the sound. These sound quite basic. When I put this on, I was like, okay, I see what they've done here. So there's like a super detailed bass, but then there's not much of mids or treble. It's like almost they're completely missing. To get a bit geeky on this and describe that more accurately, imagine a full scale EQ that looks something like this on your standard sound preset with these buds. And I'm not even gonna go through all their presets as well, these sound even worse. I was quite disappointed until I played around with their custom EQ which is quite fiddly. Being an early device I think this needs some updates, but at least this worked. I've noticed even with a flat EQ this sound actually better. But tweaking this back and forth I found a sweet spot and this actually changes everything. It makes this sound from a $49 earbuds to something very close to a higher end earbuds. I've been using these every day since I've got them and they have so much character and great sound stage. So the best way of listening to this is with a custom EQ and noise cancellation on, which is quite strange. I find other earbuds sound better with these features off, but who knows. And then the EQ setting I found to work best on these is bass minus one, mids on six and trebles on six, so all the way up. And don't worry, this won't blow your ears. It actually brings back what's missing on these buds. As I was mentioning before, they have a huge amount of bass and no mids or treble out of the box. So to make this EQ as flat as possible back to where it should be, you need to turn these frequencies up. And you'll be surprised how good these can sound actually. So to sum up, the drivers in these can definitely be pushed to reveal quite a lot of audio resolutions, but this is most likely a software issue at this stage and hopefully nothing will come up with a fix for this. Or maybe a better EQ app with more frequency bands, something like that. The good news is now that we know these buds can actually sound really good for only $49. So that was it, let me know what you think and if you got the nothing phone please leave it down in the comments what you think of it so far or if you're thinking to get one if you have any questions. I still have the phone and I think I'm gonna keep it, it's actually my first Android phone and I'm really happy to play around with it. So stay tuned for the next video, I might review another smartphone, it's quite fun. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.